Okay, everybody, welcome out. Tonight's uh, essential oil is lavender. We all love lavender. I think this quickly becomes one of everybody's favorite. Mm -hmm. It's one of the ten top ten essential oils you should have in your home. And, and um, lavender is amazing. I just talked. I was talking to a lady today who's she just wants to get more lavender, and that was her favorite. So mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So I introduced Jade, um, who's going to share with us all about lavender. Well, thank you. Um, so guys, uh, does anybody have any questions or comments before we get right into it? Oh, okay. If you guys want to, just uh, go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, yeah, don't feel like um, you're butting in or anything. We welcome all the comments and the stories. So go ahead and um, make comments, but um, otherwise I'll just keep moving forward and just sharing the information about lavender. So here's a little quick summary about lavender. Uh, you know, if we combine lavender uh, with um, uh, other oils, we can help increase focus, uh, balance blood pressure. I didn't talk about that too much. It just does so many things it supports uh, seasonal issues so um, when we have some allergies for example it supports our body to balance that it's great for skin great for calming and relaxing and that's calming and relaxing in all the ways so uh, mind body and spirit and it uh, encourages us to have open communication and emotional honesty so this is the oil that I did not like for about two or three years. It was an oil that I felt like I had to use because I had a lot of allergies and skin problems and Most things. Most people love it. Most people love it. But, uh, you know, I think this is why I, I learned so much because I struggled with it. Um, so anyways, I finally became friends with it and uh, it smells very nice to me now. Um, and I'll continue to have a good relationship with it. So... Anyways, lavender um, is from um, the, getting it from France and now um, we have a bunch of lavender from Bulgaria as well. And, um, you know, doTERRA is just going to keep up that supply and it's, it's in, in so many things. Um, so lavender, they call it the mother of essential oils. Um, you know, just remember that uh, because... It means it can do so much okay anything that you want it to do it pretty much can do that it's sort of like the jack of all trades for skin for bones for blood pressure for um, aches pains um, you know it's just amazing but if you think about it it does make sense because once you are calm and relaxed your body is able to produce lots of healing chemicals that can just heal the whole body so that's awesome. So the uses of uh, lavender is just so un it's unlimited and I will not do it any justice today. Um, I would just po focus on some of the things that, um, you know, I found and uh, I'm just going to focus on a few things. That's all. But it's great. Um, so the uh, lavender was used uh, for diverse ailments. The herbalist used to use to Prescribe lavender. Women use lavender in the linen closets to scent their lingerie drawers um, and to protect their clothes from moths and insects. Uh, in the World War One and Two, the Korean War and the Vietnam War, soldiers oh, I spelled it wrong. <laughs> soldiers and medics carried the lavender oil um, into the battlefield um, to help clean the wounds um, and to help soothe fears and pains and you know lavender is so gentle for the skin you know we can use it um, without diluting it but um, just for people who have sensitive skin dilute all the oils anyways just in case uh, if we dilute the oils it actually makes it more effective anyways just diluting it a little bit uh, because sometimes the oils get too strong and it works too fast and our body is not ready for it so try sometimes some people have told us that they use lavender and and it causes the skin to be a little bit irritated and um, if they dilute it with fractionated coconut oil the lavender does a perfect job so um, we you know we can be too much too fast 
Um, so that's lavender. You know, the lavender touch. Uh -huh, um, that's perfect. It's perfect yeah. dilution. Mm -hmm. If you ever wonder like how much you should dilute yeah. it, just buy it already diluted. Uh -huh. um, perfectly true. They um, do a lot of tests and each oil um, has a different dilution yeah. ratio and how effective that. it They've is. They've done all that math for you. Yeah, and lots of studies on that. Um, so four main things. If you think about lavender, I'm just going to narrow it down for people, but just remember that it does so much. So for skin, of course, um, for feelings, for relaxing, and um, for just changing your moods. Um, so, you know, one of the best, uh, I think Ben was converted to the oils because of lavender too. Yeah, we used it um, for his, his sunburn. Yeah. So, um, you know, do we want to share that story, Ben? Oh well, yeah, we went on vacation, I got a sunburn, um, put lavender on it, and I think we had some rose oil and frankincense, and, and it was, it, it, you know, made it so it wasn't um, irritating, so. Yeah, and normally it will, will um, blister, and it will just hurt, and he wouldn't be able to sleep, uh, so it kind of saved our vacation. Yeah, yeah that was awesome. Alrighty, so let's go on to the body. And lavender relaxes and protects the brain and body. Uh, there's a chemical constituent in lavender that goes into the blood-brain barrier. And so it affects our brain um, functions very quickly. So that's, that's why it's so effective in calming us. We've got dentists um, that would put two drops of lavender in um, the patient's hands and they cup it over their nose and just smell it for about 10 minutes before they go in just to calm them down and um, make it so that their blood pressure doesn't go up too high when they have to do um, some work on their mouth. Because you know, a lot of people get very anxious in um, the dentist's office, right? Yeah. Alrighty, so one of the easiest ways and most popular way to use it, the lavender is um, for bedtime. So one drop of uh, lavender on the pillow uh, for more restful sleep, um, or you can diffuse the lavender in the room, um, you know, anywhere in the room. So that's really good for bedtime. Um, for skin irritations, all sorts of skin irritations. But like uh, we said earlier, remember to dilute the lavender, okay? Um, it's an air freshener. If you like the smell, it's going to be an air freshener. You can add it to a um, bottle, a spritzer bottle, a spray bottle, and you can use that to spray with. Um, it calms nerves. So, of course, smelling it will help calm the nerves and um, help promote uh, calmness. Now, uh, the lavender is one of the ingredients in your Aroma Touch, and Aroma Touch oil is the um the massage blend and massage blend is for relaxing so that's why uh, lavender is in there but you can also make um, some of your own blend with lavender marjoram basil rosemary um, or white fur so you can add or mix and match those oils and make your own version if you like okay so rub that on your shoulders before you go to bed so you can relax and fall asleep faster Okay. Especially the, the tension that comes from a lot of stress. You have mm -hmm. a lot of stuff on your shoulders or, you know, a lot of responsibilities and stuff. Um, you got to relax that tension that's from stress. Yeah. You know, I used to use it every night and now I use it less. But once in a while, I still have to remember to use it because my brain thinks um, and I forget that my body's all tensed up and I just keep going and going and I'm not realizing that I'm all wound up until I go to bed and then I'm more kind of tired and my neck kind of hurts, my shoulders are sore. So that's a really quick way for me to relax and, and fall asleep. Okay. Um, the next one is speech support. And this is really a big deal um, for uh, children nowadays a lot of kids um, have to go to speech therapy and have um, speech concerns 
So this is, it goes into the brains, but it also, um, you know, if we rub it on the neck, on the outside of the neck, uh, it helps uh, with, you know, relaxing the muscles, relaxing the tissues so that they can speak, okay? So that's really good. Of course, I use it before I go up and teach a class or um, stand up on stage because that helps me relax and feel more confident in what I have to say. So before a scary conversation with friends or something, you can use lavender. So you can say and speak and say the words that you need to say without um, fear. And sometimes because of that confidence, um, the person that you're talking to, they respond more positively to you. Okay. All right. So pink eye healing support. Um, now we have, you know, a rule that we don't put oils in our eyes, but you can put oils on your fingers and toes. And the, those are the reflex points for the eyes. Um, so my friend came to school one time and she said, Jade, because she's another teacher, said, Jade, what do I do about my daughter? Because I don't want to put oils in her eyes. Um, and she's so little, if we put it near, she'll rub it on. And because she had pink eye and um, I said, hey, put them on her toes. So two days later, she's like, oh my gosh, it's all clear. No, so no yuckies in the eyes and not red and, you know, weepy and stuff. So that's amazing. You know how and you can't um, you can't do that with uh, anything else. Hey, so that's a good thing. So it goes with um, uh, other oils too. So you can use Immortel. Uh, I, um, for adults, of course, you can. It ha it's in Immortel, so you can um, uh, dilute it and just dab it around your eyes, just to help with eyesight and um, to help with wrinkles. So that's amazing. Uh, but for kids. And sometimes for some adults, if it's too sensitive for your skin, put it on your fingers and your toes. Okay. So that's easy enough. Does anyone want to say something or make comments or ask questions? All good. Alrighty. So you've heard this before, but it will repeat it. Headaches. Um, we want to support our body and uh, so that it's relaxed and um, help it heal from it, headaches. So just mix lavender, frankincense, and peppermint and um, dilute it if you can. You can rub it on your temples and the back of your neck. And um, we have a link here on our website for more information about other types of headaches because there's several different types of headaches. that so, um, if one uh, blend doesn't work, or one solution doesn't work, maybe you have a different kind of headache, okay? All right, so um, it's to use lavender, um, two drops, clary sage, five drops, cypress, three drops, and add it to one teaspoon of coconut oil, and you can blend it and um, just smell it, and uh, just to help relieve some tension and exhaustion so that's another option instead of just using plain lavender you can mix it up with clary sage which is really yummy anyways and um, cypress okay help you feel peace and renewed energy so that's that for the body okay anyone want to make a comment or ask questions mm -hmm. Stacey? Well, I just went for Memorial Day. I was in Florida and we both got burned a little. So um, I remember Ben said it helped, but I couldn't remember what he did. So I just looked it up and it said to mix it with water. And then I sprayed it from the bottle. And then my mom was like, you know, I, I said it helped, but she, then she reminded me, she was like, what about coconut oil? If you put it with that, and I was like, yeah. so like every couple hours, I was just, it was only my legs where the shorts were rubbing. So I kept on doing that. And it really like the pain, it would take away the pain. You know, it took a while for the redness to go away, but, but um, it was helping it heal anyway. It, it, it was gone within a couple of days, but, um, and then that blend that you said for muscle tension, yeah. I had used that blend on my neck and 
because like I could feel the pain here, but it was starting to go, you know, up, up into my head. So um, I used it and I just used it twice in one day and because I could tell it was going to get worse. And um, it was so much better. That is a really good blend. I, I did use it on my shoulders as well. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, but I did not know the Immortel thing for eyesight. I know my mom said that there was an eyesight one. Uh -huh. But we're looking it up and couldn't remember. So now, now I know it's the lavender with the Immortel because we both want to improve our eyesight. <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. Um, so go back to the, the burns. You can actually, if you don't have coconut oil, we use the rose lotion and add an extra uh, lavender in there. So that was really good. Um, and like uh, you said, it every few hours because otherwise it sings and it sings. <laughs> but it's really... It works pretty fast, I feel. Um, so we didn't um, blister or, um, yeah. But even through the night, the very first night, we had to kind of get up a, a few times and put extra just to make sure that we, we always have <laughs> the lavender on. So that's really yeah. Hard. I just mixed the bottle and I carried it around me the rest of the time that I was in Florida. Uh -huh. And then I just kept like, I'd go to the bathroom, just like rub it or whatever. And then yeah. I'm like, okay. And I did wake up in the middle of the night and spray, yeah. you know, myself. Cause I think as long as you keep it moist, then it doesn't um, start hurting so bad again. So yeah. Yeah. So I, I think um, your mom was at the um, summit down here in Destin early on this year. And one lady, she uh, shared a story of using Immortel for her eyesight and um, her glasses, she felt like they, were, um, they weren't helping her. But she went back um, to the dentist, uh, the dentist, the optometrist. And um, anyways, he asked her what she was doing because her eyesight improved. And then she kind of looked for an old pair and the, she said she, it was a pair that she wore 14 years ago and she put it on and she said it was so much better. Like she could see clearly. So the prescription um, glasses that she had currently, it wasn't her, it wasn't for her anymore. Wow. So, yeah. And I met a team member of hers just this week in Ohio and she shared the same story. So in one time. Did they put it on their toes or did they do the eye or did they do both? It's just around the eye. It's not around the eye. close. And be careful because some people say that it's hot for them. So you just got to play with it. For me, it's okay. Um, but I know some people are more sensitive and um, dilute it with fractionated coconut oil. So maybe pour it out into another roller bottle and then mix mm -hmm. it with coconut oil. Um, so that blend is awesome mm -hmm. though. Awesome. Okay. Um, yeah, lots of different things that the skin can do <laughs> um, that can go wrong. And lavender is just like um, one of those oils that you can just depend on for that. So it's, it's one that our kids carry around with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, bug bites, yep. scrapes, yep. bumps and scrapes. It's lavender yep. and Luca. Yeah. And so. Yeah. Help their friends out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They they're always using lavender. So we, we um sleep is another um we don't have that on this list, but a lot of people, like oh well bedtime. Okay? Yeah. Um, a lot of people you know. <laughs> I use it every day. <laughs> I layer it with cedar wood. Oh yeah. Oh, right. and sleep. And now the Serenity blend has a cedar wood. Yes. Love it. The Serenity blend is my friend. Or the, that's, that's lavender piece in Australia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it in the capsule because when I travel, I can take it. And, you know, you sleep odd hours, you wake up too early and all these things. And so Serenity helps me just go to sleep and have a deep sleep um, and just be as um, alert as I possibly can <laughs> for that day. It doesn't matter how you take it, whether it's put on your pillow or mm -hmm. across your forehead or, you know, uh, breathing it in, diffusing it around, mm -hmm. or taking it internally mm -hmm. through a pill or something. Yeah. And you can take a lavender dr directly in water mm -hmm. when it's out of pill. It just yeah. doesn't have the nicest you know, taste. taste. <laughs> but people use it for food, guys. They put it into crackers and 
drinks. Mm-hmm. Stacy? Um, Jason's mother t- was had to take a test to be certified um, for her therapy thing. And if, if they don't pass, they're like on a probation, right? And so she didn't know what to do. So um, we told her, well, lavender's supposed to call me before a test or whatever. But we didn't realize about the focus. And she... <laughs> She accidentally poured too many drops, but she said it didn't taste so great, but she just drank the whole thing. And she said that she was calm. She said she could just remember. She just breezed through it. She said she like was done quicker than anyone else. But so then after we were looking it up and um, I was like, how did it taste? She's like, it probably would have tasted okay if I didn't pour, you know, <laughs> all this stuff in it. But um, we looked it up and then I forgot until you just said about the, the focus thing. I, I would have said it earlier, but um, that was just like the week before Memorial Day. So she shared it with us when we were down there and she said how well it really worked. And she was like, you know, I, I always get anxious for tests. So from now on, whenever I have to recertify, I'm going to carry that with me. But um, that was good to know because we can pass that along to kids and stuff. You know? Yeah, that's awesome. It's a good thing I didn't put her to sleep. She <laughs> drank too much. So kind of take a test and just doze off. <laughs> Yeah, that was a perfect yeah. segue. Well, lavender is pretty potent, mm-hmm. so um, mm-hmm. diluting it is a good idea. Yeah. So uh, for the mind, um, of course, like what Stacey said, it's great for calming the nerves and just feeling less anxious. Um, great for anger, too. I, uh, I just still remember how funny it was when we had I had grade six boys come in from lunchtime and they're angry and then their face is all pink and sweaty and... Uh, I just put a drop of lavender on my chest and just stood next to the kid. And uh, you can see his shoulders all tense and he's not ready to learn. And after a few minutes, it's, oh, and it drops his shoulders and then he breathes. And I thought, like, okay, did the job. Yay, let's move on. <laughs> what we call a human diffuser. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so lavender is the oil of communication. Right, so it's coming to the mind and it allows the brain to put words to feelings into feelings, right? Um, uh, not words into feelings, feelings into words, excuse me. <laughs> and then assist you to convey those thoughts and feelings effectively and clearly. Okay, um, so we have to switch this here. <laughs> okay, so it helps um, put, say, what did, what did I say here? Puts insecurity and fears at ease, okay? So it addresses these following emotions, negative emotions, blocked communication, fear of rejection, feeling unseen or unheard, feeling constricted, tension, emotional dishonesty, hiding, and fear of self-disclosure. So if we have any of those, um, it's going to help us overcome it. And for me, because I have such a strong um, aversion to lavender, I mean, I looked at that and I'm all, that's all of me. So I was like, oh dear, where do I start? <laughs> so anyways, it helps with the relaxing. And we said earlier, it's uh, one of the oils found in the Serenity Calming Blend. So of course, your attitude diffuser along with any other um, calming oils that you like and um, just playing around with it. So thank you to Dr. Susan Lawton. We have a blend at Relieve intolerant and impatient feelings and that's me too (laughs) so it's two drops of lavender three drops of bergamot one drop of peppermint and mix that with coconut oil okay and you can smell it and rub it on yourself and um, put it in your diffuser just to help you feel more calm and tolerant so um, that's something that I need. So, I mean, every week, every oil that comes up and I'm working on that oil, I'm thinking this is the exact perfect oil for my problems this week. And maybe God gave me the problems I can help. So I know what to write. <laughs> so who knows? It's, you know, chicken and egg, egg for chicken. <laughs> well, anyways, relieve hurt and bitter feelings. Okay. For the those people that are struggling with this, two drops of, Lavender, two drops of rose, if you do have rose, um, and two drops of helichrysum. If you don't have rose, mm-hmm. the, um, there are a few blends that have rose in it. The, mm-hmm. the healing hands is the best way mm-hmm. to yeah. get your rose because it's, yeah. it's not a one that you can buy. Every year they have a competition where you can win a bottle. Mm-hmm. 
And you can apply it over the liver. Okay, and so Mortel also has it. Uh -huh. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's an awesome oil. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's for a few, uh, relief, hurt, and bitter feelings. Okay, because I know it's uncomfortable, and sometimes we hold on to it for who knows what reason, but we really want to get rid of it. Okay, um, relieve anxious um, desperation, so sort of like the uh, panic. So four drops of lavender, rose, two drops, and both of it together in fractionated coconut oil, and you can put it on the back of your neck um, with the expectation or the affirmation that everything is going to be better, everything is going to work out. You know, sometimes we get into a little rut and then we spiral downwards, and uh, before we know it, we're negative and um, feeling anxious and desperate. This is a good oil to, uh, I guess, uh, disconnect from the outcome. Okay, whatever the outcome is, it's going to be good for us. All right. So the last thing here, and like I said, I'm not going to, I'm not doing any justice to lavender because it can keep going and going. But it's uh, great for the nerves and agitated feelings. Um, so we can add wild orange. Um, so three drops of lavender, two drops of wild orange, and one drop of bergamot. And, um, you know, gently uh, mix that up and put it on your forearms. And because these uh, citrus oils, you don't want to go straight into the sun and get a tan, uh, you can do that and um, uh, you know, be indoors <laughs> for a while or wear long sleeves. Um, but it's, it helps you feel more peaceful and uh, renewed. It may sound like a lot of these uh, sound exactly the same. Yeah. Relief, 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 relief. Um, up here, we also talk about relaxing and calming. Mm -hmm. And these things are more like um, physical. So relaxing the, muscle the muscles, relaxing. relaxing the tension, um, calming the nerves, um, the, the pulsing or the physical mm -hmm. symptoms. Yeah. And this yeah. is more to do with your feelings and emotions. Mm -hmm. So um, this is, we're applying it. Um, topically but these i believe could also be inhaled as mm -hmm, well because we're, we're treating the emotions i mean you're going to inhale it anyways when yeah. you're putting it on yeah your your own diffuser mm -hmm. um and it's interesting to see what oils are paired with lavender for each of these yeah. specific ones the intolerant the impatient mm -hmm. uh, bergamot and peppermint uh, nervous and agitated feelings wild orange yeah. So wild orange is the um, oil of abundance. Mm -hmm. so. so I still struggle with um, being a night owl. I know I should go to bed early. Um, so I try to use wild orange and lavender um, as much as I can so I can let go and get to bed. Yeah. So I'm still working on it, but uh, these are awesome oils to help me finally go to bed. <laughs> Alrighty, so does anyone want to add anything to this before we move on to spirit? I was just going to ask, you said if you don't have rose, did you say to use Immortel or what did you say? So um, the Healing Hands uh, lotion mm -hmm. is the best way to get your rose. Yeah. And especially if you're going to apply it topically. Now, if you're going to uh, internally, I don't know. Do you want to drink? You yeah, know, I was gonna. You know, I was just gonna say, try to use geranium. It's uh, similar to rose. That's what they call it, the poor man's rose, because it's cheaper. Also, Immortel has rose. Yes. Yep. That's why it makes you look so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it stretches out those fine lines. What lines is what it says. What lines? I don't know. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, thanks. All right. Rose is also that um, it's a oil of love too. Yes. Divine love. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to move <coughs> to the Which spirit. Which would explain, you know, desperation and those uh -huh. sorts of things. So you feel like you're going to take care of yourself and not feel safe. All right, so in order to permanently heal from anything, we have to heal from the root. I don't care what it is, we have to go back down to the root. And the root is always 
about healing the spirit, healing um, you know, the heart. So to heal the spirit, we have to clarify and identify what it is that we believe and make sure that these beliefs are good and positive beliefs. Uh, so one of the things earlier we mentioned that um, the lavender does is uh, helps us clear out the feelings of blocked communication. So to heal from blocked communication, you need to believe that you are free and unrestrained. So we may not be aware that we have our, a self-imposed limitation um, and that we may have inherited some beliefs and uh, some negative thinking patterns. Um, you know, sometimes we say, I can't or I don't know how, and it's just really um, that we don't believe we can and we don't realise that we can be free and unrestrained. It's just it's funny and you see that in children. I don't know how. I don't know how to do it. You do it for me. But you as an adult, you can say, hey, actually, I'm sure you can do it. Um, so we do that still um, for adult things. So I uh, just have to remember that we can do things and we have that choice. So how you know that uh, you have this concern is by looking at the feelings and actions and results that you have. Uh, so I, I tell people this a lot. I say the beliefs lead to thoughts, okay, and those thoughts create feelings and feelings causes action or inaction and then, then you have some results. So if you feel like, oh, I'm not able to communicate with people or with a certain person, um, then, you know, and if you've tried and you've tried and there's still something that's just bothering you so that the results, then go back to your belief and figure out if there's a false belief behind that because that's how I know that maybe I have a false belief about this because here's a pattern that's repeating all the time. Um, and then we have to ask ourselves um, what it is and then say the opposite about positive. So in scriptures, you know, the Bible and things we read, uh, you, we can judge things by their fruits. So how do we know it's good or good positive thing? Beliefs create fruits that are good and positive. Um, and if, uh, you know, we feel like we can't communicate, then maybe the belief is, um, you know, a false belief somehow. Okay, and uh, so we have to change that belief to feeling like I'm free and relaxed and I can communicate. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. So the rest of um, this post is about, oh, I just <laughs> should get back to my honey. So the rest of this post is about um, how to overcome the other things uh, that lavender can help us overcome. So the next thing is fear of rejection. I mean, who, who doesn't fear this, right? And some of us fear this more than others. Um, so to heal, heal from the fear of rejection, uh, we need to work on accepting ourselves fully and stop rejecting ourselves in the first place. Okay, so when we reject ourselves, then um, we're very sensitive to anything or anyone who remotely hints of some sort of rejection of us. Okay, so we've already, we're already raw, and if something hints at it, it's sort of like poking at that raw, painful spot. So we allow ourselves time to realize and understand that we are a child of God and that we're loved by God. Um, and so what I do is regularly list out and focus on the good qualities that I have. So this weekend, I talked to a lot of people in Ohio, and we worked on this, actually. And it was kind of hard to, to think of good stuff about us because we've spent years, a lifetime, perhaps subconsciously saying bad things about ourselves. Like, I'm not smart enough, I'm not pretty enough, I'm whatever. And um, just being very critical of self and um, focusing on our weaknesses and our shortcoming. So, um, and our society and movies and TV and news, it's... Uh, not exactly all positive too. So we, we really haven't learned to, to train our brains this way. So don't be too hard on ourselves. Um, so just uh, start by writing uh, stuff about you that you like and train your mind, train your heart and train your soul to feel like you're good enough and to be grateful for who you are, what you 
can bring to the world and share with the world. Um, so one thing that helps me to um, not judge myself so harshly is that I remind myself I'm still in the middle of my journey. I'm still on this journey. We're not done yet. Uh, so I can cut myself some slack and say, look, I, I get another go at this. Um, okay. And it, the, it's, not, it's hard and it's painful sometimes, but I, I am motivated to set a good example for my children and maybe my family and friends. Uh, so if I can do it, um, then I'll show them because not a lot of examples out there of self-acceptance and self-love. So if you like, smell and rub lavender over your heart and say, I love and fully accept myself. Okay, I love and fully accept myself. And over time, um, when people say no to you and reject you, um, it doesn't hurt so much. And in fact, sometimes it just doesn't hurt at all. Okay, and um, we're more uh, confident and happy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the next thing here, I'm gonna scroll up, but I don't wanna, um, yeah, this, this mouse, yeah, I keep on doing two fingers. Okay, so the next thing that we wanna work on with lavender, and lavender is amazing for this, is feeling unseen or unheard. Uh, you know, the feelings buried alive never die. The author, Carol Truman, that was her issue. She didn't feel like people hear her or see her or recognize her, so she said that, she, she will go to parties and recognition, even though she's invited and she's on the um, recognition list, sometimes they'll miss her name and um, forget it or misspell it or something. She said it just happens so often that she's thinking, well, there's something there, there's a pattern. So that was sort of um, me and I felt that too. Um, but I have learned now uh, to develop a stronger self-worth. I know that I'm better because lavender is now my friend and I like the smell of lavender. So that's how I gauge how well I'm doing. Um, so if you think about it, this is how I like to um, look at myself. If I imagine God being my father looking at me and how much he, he loves me, so as a mother, when I first held my firstborn in my arms, I had so much love for her. And, you know, why did this tiny human being create so much love in my heart? Because she's mine, right? And she didn't have to prove herself or earn that love. And so likewise, the infinite God, our Father in heaven, we don't, he loves us unconditionally because we're his and so I remember that and I think about that and then it helps me feel like I'm enough and it gives me courage to keep going because I'm trying to be like him. Okay, so believe that you are important and have great worth okay, and um, you're just as important as everyone else. You know, I, like I said, I used to feel very small and it didn't help that I was small too. Um, I was four years old when they stuck me into uh, just elementary school because my the birth certificate um, was wrong and they thought I was older, but I wasn't. <laughs> um, anyways, I always kept quiet and I tried not to say anything or do anything wrong. Uh, but over the years, my subconscious beliefs broadcasted to everyone that I'm small and inconsequential. And it got to the point where um, when I was in college and it was the last four months of college and I was doing a student teaching experience and it was a four month long thing my supervisor, she barely knew my name. And, you know, even though she gave, uh, she observed me and evaluated me every week, and there were only two interns, you know, and I thought, that's weird. And, and then she, she didn't notice that I came to school early every day, an hour early before people. Um, and then at the end of the practicum, she was asking me questions like, how do you spell your name again? And, you know, where were you from? And, and you married, right? She just had all of these, you know, and I felt like, huh, I'm, it's sort of invisible to her, even though I felt like I was here. <laughs> so that indicated to me that um, I needed to work on something and um, not feel like I'm small, unseen, inconsequential. Uh, so if you feel like this too, smell lavender and try to make friends with lavender. I've met only a few people this week that don't like lavender. So it's good for everyone else. <laughs> 
and say to yourself, I'm a beloved child of God. I have infinite divine worth and I only compare myself to how I was. Okay, we cannot compare apples and oranges and we can't compare each other to um, compare with each other and it's just harm, harmful, it doesn't do any good. Right? So over the uh, months and years, you'll feel more worthy and um, happy and the lavender will smell nicer for you. Okay, anybody want to add to this or say anything? Alrighty, so I'll move on to the next one is feeling constricted and tense. And to heal from this, we need to believe that we are free and powerful. Uh, sometimes we forget that we can choose to feel free and powerful. Okay, and one way we take back our power, um, well, one way to feel more powerful is to take back our, our power to choose. Um, if you imagine your your power or your potential as a glass of water. Anytime we um, we allow you know situations or society to to get to us, um, we like splash a bit of our water out of our glass, and then we are just operating on a teeny tiny little piece, um, a bit of whatever on the that's left over in there instead of having that full power in that tank. Um, I, I remind myself constantly, and Ben's here to remind me too, that between stimulus and response, there is a space, and in that space, you have the power to choose. Okay, so whether we choose positive or negative, it's our choice, but of course, us humans, the quickest and easiest immediate choice is usually negative. Uh, so we have to work a little bit extra hard to, um, to train our brains to think positive. Okay, so if somebody cuts you off or say something negative to you, about you, we can easily say, well, she made me feel bad. She said this, justifying how you, what, how, what choice you had. So you chose to be upset and you, you find justification. Or you can say, thank you. I'm a child of God and uh, with great potential to grow and change and I will improve. So I'm still working on this. <laughs> I'm not the expert. But I feel like this is a much better response um, and it allows me to keep my power. Okay. And a lot of times I recognize self-imposed restrictions and things that I thought I can't do, but really I can. All right. So keep thinking, guys, and be problem solvers and say that you can and you have that power to be free. So you're not so constricted. Lavender is there to help us um, change in this way. So smell lavender. You can rub it on your neck, on the outside and the front, and say, I am relaxed, powerful, and free to choose. We forget to choose so often and we just react. Okay, and when I do, I just have to remind myself to, you know, forgive myself and get back to basics again. Okay, basic is I'm a child of God. <laughs> I'm powerful, I can choose. All right, another thing that I, um, I think women that like and love, love, love lavender is because they're trying to define themselves, okay? So uh, this is to help with emotional dishonesty and hiding and fear of self-disclosure. And so if you like the lavender, it's you trying to come out and become yourself. So that's awesome. So I call the hiding of yourself the Mulan complex. <laughs> so you know the story of Mulan. Um, it's she's hiding who she is on the inside, pretending to be someone else to please everyone else, okay? And it's scary. Um, to open up your heart and connect to other people because you're worried that people might judge you. Okay. And you don't feel safe. Um, and you're worried about making mistakes and, um, or misbehaving and behaving differently to acceptable social um, rules okay, or cultures. 
So I feel like there's two things that we can do to help ourselves overcome this. The first thing is to love and accept ourselves, of course. Right? Again, you are a child of God. You're still in the middle of your journey. And, um, you know, and the other thing is when we mess up, I don't know about you, but a lot of people I've met, uh, you know, we, we have enough pain with the natural consequence of mess, messing up. All right. But of course we add to that, we, you know, add discouragement and add self-loathing to it as further punishment. Um, so the universe is already, you know, given us enough consequence for us to learn our lesson. But for some reason, we just take it upon ourselves to, to add more pain to it and um, do a little bit more self-abuse. Um, so in my mind, I feel like we can stop that uh, negative culture, negative habit, um, because it's unnecessary. And, um, you know, that's just going to cause more fungus inside of our body. So anytime I have some fungus um, that's uh, overgrowth and I feel like it's um, coming up again, I think, oh, man, I think I've been saying things to myself about myself that I shouldn't be and I wasn't aware. Okay. And so I have to raise that effort to, to be po more positive about myself. So smell lavender and say, I love myself unconditionally and I am patient and kind to myself at all times. <laughs> all right. And the second thing I feel we can do to help us, um, you know, to help the Mulan be herself is to get to know yourself. And um, this is challenging to a lot of us, I feel, because we haven't spent enough time um, figuring out who we are, what our talents are, uh, what our gifts are, what our likes and dislikes, and um, what our dreams really are and what we really hope for. Because, you know, even this weekend I met a lady and um, youngest in the family, and she said she's always been, always been a pleaser. And she's done everything that her mom wanted her to do and her siblings and um, just don't know because everything makes her happy. And I'm all, well, you don't have to find something that makes you really, really happy. I think you're just being content because you're pleasing everyone. You're feeling happy because other people are happy. But really what makes you truly happy inside and makes you excited, something that um, will get you out of bed early and uh, you know, keep you up at night sometimes. And that's how you know that you found your passion. So kind of like what Mulan sings, you know, who am I? Write, write in your journal um, who you are. Who is that girl that you see staring back at you in the mirror? Okay. Um, some of us have a hard time looking at ourselves in the mirror. And, uh, you know, I felt like I was the only one, but I met a few people that were just like me. Like, no, you don't want to look at yourself in the mirror now. <laughs> Get out of there as soon as I can. Um, so mirror work isn't as difficult and painful um, as we think. So over time, things can actually work um, and change permanently. All right, so I'm beginning to find more things to love about myself and to enjoy myself more. I treat myself better and um, I found some fun talents that I have and that I can appreciate. So I hope that uh, you um, continue on your journey to, to calm your body, mind and spirit so that you can um, discover your true self and uh, not hide who you really are. So I pray that we all blossom together. All right, guys. Do you have anything to add to this? Wait, is that it? Debbie? Maybe we should unmute. I was just saying that it's so good. Lavender is so good. <laughs> it's so powerful. It is. Anyone else? 
Does anyone have stories of that lavender? It was my first testimony of doTERRA. So how, how did you use it, Debbie? For sleep, for sleep. Cause I was kind of the mom that slept with one eye open, you know, all the time. And I just thought, I just remember when you came at Christmas time and then you're like, I'm, I just started using this stuff like it was so brand new to you too, but you had already seen such success from it. And I just trusted and that was my first experience to sleeping like, I sleep like a baby every night, <laughs> every night. So, That's so nice. It's so nice to yeah. wake up refreshed like, huh? Oh, right. It's a, it's satisfying. Yeah. Satisfying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. Thanks to doTERRA. I, I know how to sleep now too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I remember um, one night with the big storm and Ben got up and took care of the kids and in the morning he was like, wow, you know, what a storm last night. And I thought, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> How did I miss that? And I thought, wow, I must have really been out. And so I really appreciate that because same here with the kids. Every squeak and squeal, even if they giggle in their sleep, it's like, oh, is she okay? You know, and oh, she's asleep, she's still asleep, she's laughing in her sleep. Okay, got her back to bed. But it's awesome. Yeah, I'm so glad I'm friends with Lavender now and it's made a huge difference for me. All right, I think we're done for today. And that's all for Lavender. We'll stop the recording.